Hey everybody. Okay, so today we're going to learn how to composite using um, the quick mat, quick selection tool in combination with um, some masking techniques and we're going to also use some layer masks and adjustment layers to uh, create a composition. So we're going to use this original owl of the snowy owl on a green background and we're going to place the owl onto this snowy tree background and we're going to come integrate him using some adjustment layers. So the final composition is going to look like this. So we're going to have our owl facing the moon um, and he's going to be sort of integrated into the scene. Um, Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is get the owl off of his green summery background, right? Because he stands out against that uh, green background. Alright, so what we're going to do is we are going to go to this tool, which is called the Quick Selection Tool, and we're going to zoom in a little bit here and see what I'm doing a little bit better. And we are just going to take that Quick Selection Tool, and the cool thing about the Quick Selection Tool is it automatically detects edges, so you really just need to paint near the edges of your object, and you can change the size of the brush if you need to by using the brackets on your keyboard. I'm going to make a big brush or a small brush. Um, kind of a medium to small size brush is usually the best thing to work with. And you can see that the quick selection tool is adaptive, so it figures out what you're doing and will start making selections based on your um, selections. So still paint within your object. Um, and we're going to grab the branch here as well. Um, and if you make a mistake, like say I click right here, and I select part of the background, all you need to do is click Option. And as soon as you click Option, you see this turns into a negative symbol, and I can just paint that right out. All right. So we've got a basically rough selection here. Um, you can see the marching ants. Um, so if I want to make the selection more accurate or smoother, which usually you do want to make it smoother because it's usually a pretty rough um, pixelated selection. So we're going to go to select and we're going to change to select and mask which is kind of a mode that we can enter into. So you can see as soon as I do that I get some options over here and I get this whole new window. Um, so we'll go in, we'll smooth that selection out a little bit, that just smooths, smooths those pixelated edges um, and we'll feather it just very slightly and it smooths, just feathers that, makes it a little bit more soft of an edge um, you never want a really hard edge when you're compositing because it's just going to look fake. It's going to look like you cut it out with scissors and placed it on the background. You can also shift the edge a little uh, around a little bit. Um, so if you shift up, you're going to get more of that background, and if you shift down, you're going to get less of the less of the object or less of the owl in this case. So we're going to leave the owl at around. Uh, maybe we'll just. Um, We'll actually leave them at zero because the quick mask, uh, quick selection tool did a pretty good job of selecting. Most important thing here is to output to new layer with layer mask. What this is going to do, and you'll see a second in a second, is um, give us a new layer and a new layer mask. <laughs> um, it's a pretty obvious choice. Um, so what that does is not only does it leave the background alone, but it gives us a new layer of the background and a layer with the layer mask on top of it. So with that layer mask on top of it, you can actually zoom in to the owl. And if you use your black or your white paintbrush, you can paint in or out information on that layer mask. So we'll click on the layer mask. Um, we'll switch to the white paintbrush. And you just click that right there. Gives you the white paintbrush. And we'll make it a little bit bigger so you can see what we're doing. And I'll just paint in right here just so you can see what I'm talking about. So you still have those weird kind of beard feathers, for lack of a better term, beard feathers of that owl. You have the full length of them. So if you wanted to go in and meticulously paint in all those feathers, you could do that. Um, and if you wanted to be accurate, you would do that. So we, we'll go in and we'll switch it um, back to black, and I can go in and actually start painting in or painting out with a black brush. Um, some of that background that we don't want. Um, and you can tell this would get pretty meticulous. So what you can do is kind of approximate 
with things like this, like you're not gonna, you know, go into a dog and paint in all the hair, hair on the dog, the sort of random hairs on the dog. So you can always just kind of um, play with this and see what looks realistic. The cool thing about having this with the layer mask is you can do as little or as much as you want, and then you can go back and undo it and change it because you've still got the background here. Whereas if I just cut and paste my selection out, I lose the background and I'm never able to go back and change what I what I already did. Alright, so before we get too meticulous with this, let's look, look at it on its background. So what we're going to need to do is take this whole layer and drop it on our um, on our snowy tree and moon, right? So let's go back to the owl and we'll just grab this layer and we'll kind of drag it over here to the snowy tree and moon tab. Make sure that's activated. Hold down your shift key as you're dragging and just drop it. Holding down shift makes sure that you center that layer onto your, can your new canvas. So you can see if we look at our final, he's actually facing the wrong way. So that's an easy fix. We'll just click on that layer and we'll do edit, transform, flip horizontal. Boink. All right, now he's facing the right way. And now we can start going in. And as you can see, if we zoom into 100%, remember you're supposed to be doing everything at 100% uh, because that's how it's gonna look when it prints. You can see, we can see all that gray mess around his owl beard. So let's go in and let's use our brush and let's get rid of some of that. Whoops, I right, just painted on the back on the actual image. Make sure you're painting on the, the layer mask portion of the image, not the actual image. Um, so I can kind of go in and based on how that blue looks, I can sort of paint out some of the more distracting parts of that gray. Now, if you wanted to get really detailed, you could zoom in here and you could do it at a much higher percentage um, with a sm even smaller brush. So I can make that brush even smaller and I can go in and I can really just be really meticulous and almost pixel by pixel start editing the gray out. You can also use other selection tools like color range. So if I go up here to um, and make sure I click on the background. Um, go to select color range. You can actually um, use the color range tool which just literally samples colors um, and click on any of those problematic gray areas. You just want to make sure you're just selecting from the current layer. Um, if I click OK right now you can see it's actually going to select from the entire image. One of the ways to avoid that is to, um, so you can see all those marching ants, I've got a lot selected. One of the ways to avoid that is zoom back in um, and we're going to unselect, deselect that obviously because we don't want that selected. Um, we're going to zoom back in here and we are actually going to turn off the background layer and now we'll do select color range. And this color can be somewhat problematic because it's really essentially just a gray. And so if you see, if I click on that, um, gray, it's selecting a lot of the owl. So color range really only works for specific colors that you want to get rid of. Um, it doesn't really work very well for tones. So um, I could set my fuzziness really low and it's just going to find um, just those gray colors. Um, the higher you go, the more outside of that color range it's going to find. So you can see the whole owl gets selected or just a tiny, tiny portion of it gets selected. So if I click OK now, you'll see like if it's set that low that it's only going to select very, very specific colors. But you're still going to get things you don't want to get rid of, like parts of the owl's beak here. Um, so color range is, is useful for colors, but I'm not going to say it's very useful for black and white. So we're going to actually not use that for this. Um, 
but we can just again just be kind of zoom in and be just as meticulous as you want um, to get rid of things um, or paint them back in depending on what you need to do. Oops. Oh, I need to switch to my black. So you got this um, tool here that gives you the black and white um, background and foreground. So I'll do foreground is white, remember? And uh, remember not to paint on the background. That's what I just did. Or uh, the, the current layer. So remember we're painting on the layer mask. So we'll paint that out. And we can go in with the white. And if I wanted to paint this feather back in, I could do that. Um, you know, it just really depends on how X is the shortcut to switch back and forth between the colors. You know, and you don't want to get too carried away with this because you can actually start to make it look worse than when you started. So um, just make sure to clean it up, make it look somewhat realistic. Um, in terms of this picture, this zoom level. Um, at this zoom level, sometimes you start losing a sense of the whole. Um, so make sure you're not losing too much of a sense of the whole. Another thing you can do is just simply in, in this um, section of the um, owl, we can actually blur that out a little bit later and to give it a little bit more softness because um, you don't ever want things to be really hard like like I talked about you don't want it to look like you cut it out with scissors all right so we'll leave that alone for now and then let's just talk about integrating the owl into the background and I'm just gonna do that using the final composition because we've got our owl on our background it looks good um, but let's just make him look a little bit better by just adjusting some things so let's go from the bottom up um, so I'll turn off all these layers and we'll turn them back on as we go up. So you can see here's the owl layer. Turn that off. And here's the background um, layer down here. Um, Alright, so we'll turn these off. And then one of the things you can do as well is you can actually put a lens blur on the background to make the background seem just very slightly out of focus in relationship to your subject. So the subject is sharp against the background. Um, you know, like most cameras you use have a hard time getting that full depth of field, especially if you're using a telephoto. So it could be a good idea to go in and blur that background. And um, you can do it by simply going onto your background and doing a um, layer, duplicate layer, and, um, and then on that background layer, Go, or um, on the duplicated background layer. Go ahead and do filter, um, blur, lens blur, and the main adjustment, sorry this window is too small, too, yeah, too big. Uh, the main adjustment, I think you'd be able to see this still, um, is just your radius and that's going to give you the basic amount. Um, I can zoom in here. See what I'm doing. Um, you can see how much this is blurred out at a radius of nine. So we'll actually pull that back a little bit because I don't I actually don't want it that blurry. And we'll do like a radius of um, six. And it just gives us a little bit of softness, but not totally blurred out. Because I still want that moon to be somewhat sharp. So we'll click OK. And you'll see what that looks like. So um, turn that on and off. And uh, it just blurs it compared to the owl. All right. And um, so that's just this layer. If I turn that on, it's going to override it. So you can see the first time I did it, it wasn't quite as blurry. And that's really up to you. You can just go back and forth, you know, depending on how you want to do it. So for the owl himself, the way I. Um, wanted him to sit on the background. I wanted that sky to be a little less blue. So I went ahead and desaturated the sky. And I did that by just pulling down the main saturation and the main lightness a couple points. And then going into the blues and pulling those way back. So saturation back to 75. Changing the hue so it's a, the sky is a little bit more green um, in terms of a blue color. 
and bringing that lightness up. So uh, just bringing that up so it, it's not quite as dense. And then I went up to the background and just made it darker. So it just had a little bit more rich appearance and the owl stands out against it a little bit more. So that was just simply bringing down the density um, by a couple stops using the um, curves tool here. Adjustment layer on and off, that's what that looks like. The owl himself, um, what I wanted to do was make him a little bit darker. So I actually used a clipping mask um, here and I'll show you something here real quick. So if you see this, um, a clipping, what a clipping mask does is affects just the layer directly below the mask. You know how, or directly below the layer mask, adjustment layer. So you know how all these affect the layers below them. Um, anything that's below a layer is affected by the layer on top of it. Um, and so instead of making the whole scene darker, I just want to make the owl darker. So I'll turn this on. I'll show you. I just did a layer, curves layer, brought it down. Um, and then what I'm going to do is go to layer, create clipping mask right here, right in the middle. And then you'll see a little arrow that indicates that it's only affecting this layer right below it. So you can click that and you can see what it does. It just makes the owl darker. So he's going to be a little bit darker against that background, have a little bit more contrast. And then I went to another adjustment layer. The one thing that was annoying me about the owl was that he has some green and yellow reflected on him. And he's also sitting on this mossy branch. So we turn that off, you can see this mossy branch. And then you can see within his white feathers, they're actually reflecting yellow and green. If you turn that on and off, you see it. So that you can see that yellow and green there. So what you can do is get rid of that. And if you just go into uh, hue saturation and then go to greens or even yellows more specifically, and we pulled that way back. So I just got rid of all the yellows because there's really no yellow in this scene. So it doesn't make sense to have yellow in it. So we went from this to that. So just having a nice neutral owl against that relatively neutral background um, looks better than having a kind of yellowish green owl sitting on a, a blue background. All right. Um, darken bottom. So what I did was I just created kind of a lighting effect by using a gradient. And if you turn on your um, layer mask, you can actually see um, what the layer mask looks like. So it's a gradient that goes from black all the way to white. And so it's, a, it's just a curves layer that darkened that bottom corner essentially by using that gradient on the layer mask. And then last but not least, the curves. This curves layer really, if you double click on it, just shows you I brightened it up a little bit. It had gotten too dark. So I just brought these middle up a little bit, brought the highlights up, made them a little more contrasty. And then to give it a little bit more kind of cool wintry feel, I just um, added some blue to the scene. So that's our little owl. Um, looks good. All right, so email me if you have questions about this, but hopefully this will help you with your compositing um, project.